Hello everyone and welcome to another feature preview of Godot 4. Today we'll talk about this nifty little addition to Godot 4. It's not a plugin, it's part of the the main code base, the core code code base. And I want to talk a little bit about it because I see so much potential of applications using this for dynamically positioning your skeleton or your your character, depending on what you want to do. Thank you for Twisted Twigleg. He is part of Google's Summer of Code of 2020. He brought and made a lot of changes. I'll leave the, this pull request and the other pull request that he also worked on and his own project, which has some demo things. And this one is the main one, which was the one actually merged, though this one has less information. This one will have more. Check in the description if you want to check all the different things. I'll just showcase a little bit of what I found. So as you can see here in the, this demo scene that I will be building together with no code, by the way, I'm making the head of the character follow something. I'm also making the hand stretch out to try to, to grasp it. And this can be done while an animation is being played, as you can see here. So you're able to merge an animation, say, of uh, a character running while trying to, I don't know, stretch out or something in front of it. Or maybe you want the character to press a button, for example, so it needs to, while it's animating its idle frame or walking frame, depending, you can also animate this. You just make an animation of him stretching out to somewhere. And then you use this method of modifying the bone so that you can define where it, it actually points to. Of course, some limitation needs to be done so that you don't break immersion, as you can see here. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's build this from scratch. I'll just make a new scene here. And if I were you, just drop into Mixamo, I got this jumping animation. Just get anything or just get your own character maybe that you want to try it out and import it to your scene. I'll just instantiate here. Save this into my IK, this would be IK2. And yeah, this is our brand character coming from FBX. If I right click and make editable children, I'll be able to find the skeleton and be able to even see the bones, do things with the bones. You see, there's a lot of customization you can already do here. The first thing that we'll talk about very fast is there's a little bit of updates in the bone attachment 3D. You are able to override a pose. I'm not entirely sure if this is finished yet, but keep in mind, this is al already possible. And here's an example, say I get the head and I can't move here. If I click here, override pose, I'm able to move the head to wherever it goes. Note that if I override the pose, then like it literally overrides the entire animation. So maybe something that you want, but keep this in mind. Now to the changes in the skeleton 3D and they are mostly done through resources. So you could create the resources here and also through code and edit everything through code or even through animations. I'll do it manually just for, to give the example, but I'll leave it to you to imagine what more can be done. This thing is the most important thing, new modification stack, where you can stack modifications on top of whatever is being done to the bones in the armature. We create a new stack. I'll even make this bigger so that you can read everything in case you want to try it out too. I'll enable because by default, everything is disabled and I'll add one modification. This one modification will be a look at modification. There are several. We'll look at this one and this one. I couldn't make this one work. And the other, like this one is a generic one that I think you, you need to implement by yourself. That's what I understood. And these two and this one I didn't try, but let's see. Look at is the most easy and simple one, even by the developer themselves. So I'll just make a sphere 
So I, I now have a target, so to speak, to the look at. Now coming back to the skeleton 3D, I can go here and assign the bone that I want to look at. I imagine there will be easier ways to do this when this is actually released, but for now I need to actually find the, this IDX from a bone attachment 3D. I, at least I found it's the easiest way of doing things. Go back to here, I type 5, it populates the name. I'll say my target is this mesh instance 3D. And you already see that the head is, even though it's totally weird, it's following now the, the sphere. Super simple. To fix that, we can also like just change these things. And what I found doing it does well for this mesh in specific are these values, but maybe your mesh will be a little bit different. I can even say looking a little bit upwards. And now the ball, you can move and it will follow the ball even during an animation. So let me put it in repeat. And you'll see that the, the animation happens, everything, but at the same time, it's trying to look at the ball. You can also use a modification that is built on top of it which is the strength. Maybe you don't want it to totally follow, just try to. So you can see if I move here, it will move a little bit the, the head, but not totally. I'll make this strength probably 0 0.7. And you see that it, now the head won't actually go too far. It's more realistic this way, except this breaking point. <laughs> Next part is, will be the other modification. I'll stop this for now. The other modification can be done on top of this one. So what I'll do is save this one, save in my AK, I say head look maybe. Okay. So now I have this one. I'll modify this one to be a stack folder. I said I didn't test out this one, but this one is just another stack on top of the previous stack. And I'll call this stack uh, reach out. And part of this stack, there will be the previous one, which is the head look. And I'll add another one, which will be the hand reaching out. The hand reaching out, I found it's good to do in two steps. So because of that, I'll just create another stack holder. And within this one, there will be two things happening into here. You, you can see it already gets a little bit out of hand, but of course I can just click on this one and simplify things for my interface Hand reach out. I'll do two things. First will be the fabric and then I'll do a look at the fabric will focus on moving the arm forearm and left hand, these three towards the ball and the look at will make sure that hand itself is facing how I want to the ball. You'll see why that is useful when I finish the first part. So let's get the numbers of these three, left arm, forearm, and so on. Uh, left arm is 10, so 10, 11, 12. I'll say my target will be that ball once again. My joints, this one will have three bones. And you can try out many different lengths and different bones as well. I'll say the first one is 10, second one is 11, and third one will be 12. And we're back. I noticed that there was probably a bug still lingering. You need to go to skeleton and through the skeleton select target node path. If you do it outside, like double clicking here and selecting from here, it won't work. You need to go to skeleton and select, but maybe this will get fixed later. So now with this, you can see that within the modification stack, there is a reach out. This reach out is a stack once again with head look, which is changing the head and hand reach out. The hand reach out is currently just focusing on making the hand stretch out to the ball. And you'll see what happens if I get close. This is totally not what a normal hand would do. So to fix this, 
there are many parameters that you can choose and edit. One of them is this roll thing. So I, I rolled this first bone over here. And now I just want to make sure the hand is properly pointing. So I could roll the hand, but then the hand will actually be in a weird position once again. So this is what I meant. Now the hand is not actually reaching out to the ball. Is You see what it does? So instead of doing this, I'll just make another modification to the bone after this one. I'll add another one and this will be once again the lookout. Lookout will focus on the hand, uh, which is 12. I'll make sure to point to the same place and now I can edit how I want it to be. So I changed the Z to 60 and now it's already what I want. So now you can see it kind of brings the ball to himself even. Maybe this is an apple and you want to eat or something. I don't know. And this can all be done dynamically, which means if the apple is on the ground, you can have, uh, I have a jump animation, which is the opposite. Maybe the apple is above and you're jumping, trying to reach the apple. Now we can do it. Much more can be done. Obviously I am just messing with the arm. Same could be done with the spine to make sure the spine is pointing towards. And of course, this can be also the opposite. Instead of a apple, it could be something that you're throwing away. Or maybe you're just walking and you want to reach out. And now you can also add to the skeleton more bones so that you reach out with the finger and not the entire palm. Once again, shout out to Twisted Twig. Like check his Twitter account for some more examples that he talked about in 2D and 3D. And you can grab the Godot code to test it out coming to the merged PR into checks. And you just find what whatever operating system you're using and download. In my case it was this one. Thank you for watching.